Hello everyone, in this tutorial, we will paint our sculpted model from the last video. Create an eye shade and set up the lighting. First, select the head and create a new material. I will rename it to colors. Next, switch to material preview. The default white material color will show. Just assign any color as we will be replacing it later on. Now drag this material over the nose part and the tongue. If there are more parts in your design, you can assign the same material. Open the Object Data Properties panel. And here go to the Vertex Colors menu. Click the plus icon. This will create a vertex color value. Double click and rename it to Colors. You can give any name to it if you want. I will split the viewport so we can have two windows visible. In the right side window, from the top menu, select the shader editor. Here press Shift A and add a vertex color node. Connect the color property to the base color and in the drop down select the colors value which we created in the Vertex Colors panel. Close the Shader Editor window so we can see our 3D view in full. As soon as you apply it, our model will become white and some parts may look black. The parts that are black need to have vertex color assigned to them. For this, select the nose and in the Vertex Color panel assign the colors value. Make sure the name of this value is same as the one you assigned before in the head part. In our case, it is colors. Do the same for the tongue part as well and assign the vertex color value. The colors of these two parts should change to white. In the render properties, enable ambient occlusion and change the value to 1. This will add some shadow depth over the model and make our final result better later on. Before using vertex painting, please note that vertex painting color results are dependent on model resolution. If your model is high resolution, then the colors will look sharp and clear. So for this reason, it is always better to apply any modifiers like a multi-res or a subdivision modifier before the drawing painting performance will be better as well. Now press Ctrl tab and switch to vertex paint option. You will be able to see new tools available in the left top corner. First we will change the basic color from white to orange. After that start painting over the model. We can access some more properties from the workspace panel on the right side. Below the color picker, open the color palette option. Click new and add the orange color by clicking the plus icon. This will help us to save our colors and reuse them whenever needed. Try changing different colors and painting over the model. To fill up the entire model with one solid base color, press shift K. The model part will be filled with whichever color is active. I will add another color. This will be white. Save it in the palette also. Start painting where the white will appear. I will paint the color over the sides and the ears. You can also right click and change the strength of the color as well. Next, switch to the Blur tool. This tool allows to smoothen and blend the hard edges of the colors over the model. If I zoom in to the back of the sculpted hair ear parts, I can easily blend the colors here with the Blur tool.
Now to fill up the nose part. First make sure to switch back to the draw paint tool and make the nose part active by pressing Alt Q. It will highlight. This works just like we did in sculpting to switch between different parts. I will use a dark brown color for the nose. In the same way, make the tongue part active by hovering the mouse over it and pressing Alt Q. Fill it with a red color. Press Shift K to fill the entire part. Another way to see your vertex color in the viewport without any lighting is that you can use the vertex option in the display menu and selecting the flat view. You can use the same painting tools here as well. This setting makes selecting the colors and painting more easier directly from the 3D viewport. To select and pick any color from your model, hover the mouse over that area, press S and that color will become active for painting. I will now switch back to the material preview. I will paint inside the mouth area with black color. Change the strength to 1 as well so the color is dark and black. Also paint the color in the back portion of the head eye sockets. You can use the blur tool to blend the colors a little more. Now we will create the eye shader. Isolate the eyes part only. Shortcut for it is forward slash. I will split the view and in the right side make the shader edited visible. You can also use the shading tab from the top menu instead of splitting the viewport again. Use whichever you feel comfortable to use. Create a new material and name it eyes. Change the roughness value to 0 so the material is more reflective. Shift A and add a color ramp node. Attach the color property of the color ramp to base color. Next, add a gradient texture node and connect the color to the factor property of the color ramp. Move the black and white point sliders closer in the color ramp. You can see how the colors are looking in the 3D viewport. Click the gradient texture node and press Ctrl T to add a mapping and a texture coordinate node. In the texture coordinate node, connect the normal to vector of mapping node. So we will rotate the position of the colors. In the Z rotation, use minus 90 and in the X rotation, enter 90. In the location value of X, use something like 1.2 or 1.3 so our black color point moves forward. Now in the color ramp node, we will add some new slider points and assign different colors. Using this technique, you can easily change the size of the iris and the colors of the eyes. And make any adjustments to the eyes as you need. Exit the isolate mode. You can also rotate them to look at different directions. Now we will add some lighting to our scene. For this, switch to rendered view. The first thing we will add is the HDR image for lighting. Click the color node and select environment texture. The scene will become pink. Click open and select an HDR image. I have provided a link for the HDR image that I have used in this scene in the description below. You can use the same or any other if you want. I will change the strength to 4. Now to remove the background and replace it with a solid color, 
I have used the world node setup as shown here or you can also check my other crystal tutorial video if you need to see how to set up the background color from the start. You can also make direct adjustments to the eyeshader from the material panel as well. A small thing I just noticed here are the endpoints of these side whiskers. Go in edit mode, select all the end vertices and press Alt S and move the mouse to scale them down so the endpoints look sharper. Now press Shift A and add a sunlight. Change the intensity to about 20. and use a slight orange color. Position it so the light is coming from the side. One last thing I would like to add are the extra highlights over the eyes. You can skip this part if you want to. For this, press Shift A and add a point light. Move it to the front side In the properties, change the power to about 100. Increase the radius a little more. Try increasing the power to 1000. It may seem too intense. To fix this, we will reduce the diffuse amount to zero. Change the color to darker orange. In the area type light, we can change the shape of the highlight as well. From here you can continue making adjustments to the colors, eyes and lighting. And this completes the tutorial. I hope you find it useful in some way. If you would like to see more tutorials in the future, then please give this video a like, subscribe and turn on notification bell as well. As always, thank you very much for viewing and I will see you in the next tutorial.